where do I start? So this is a question that I hear a lot. And if anyone knows me, you know I love to talk about a good scope and sequence. So I thought I would make one about the science of reading. My name is David Pelk and I'm a reading interventionist in Michigan. I started learning about the science of reading about a year ago. This is by no means uh, the only way. In fact, it would be really interesting to learn about what others consider a good sequence. It would be especially interesting to me to see sequences from different positions. You know, this is coming from reading interventionists, but it would be neat to see like a college professor, special education teacher, kindergarten teacher, or maybe a high school teacher. Um, one thing that I have been thinking a lot about while teaching virtually has been this increased urgency to find the best resources, tools, and practices to impact kids the fastest and the most effectively. I think it has really forced me to prioritize the things that I teach. And then with limited time online and more time spent planning, I believe that this is probably the best time to start adding science of reading into your teaching. All right, so I embedded some videos in here for you. You may have already listened to this, but if you haven't, make sure to listen to Emily Hanford's report. It has really opened a lot of conversation around the teaching of reading and perk the curiosity of many educators. After you listen to the, that, watch this professor. He is a French psychologist and cognitive neuroscientist. He talks about how the brain learns to read, fascinating images of the brain to connect to his studies. Both of these pieces will cause you to begin questioning what you have learned about teaching kids to read. Next, it's time to get fired up with Nancy Young. She is a very dedicated and knowledgeable and passionate specialist in reading, spelling, and writing. You probably have seen this ladder of reading that she created. She discusses it in her webinar, one of my personal favorites. There's an embedded video in there as well. Next, it's time to focus with the great Dr. Jan Hasbrock. She's a reading specialist. She's been a reading coach, researcher, instructor, and professor. Her overview of the science of reading is top notch. It highlights current research and it discusses effective and explicit instruction. Next, make sure to get connected with Donna Heidmanick and the Facebook page that she started, The Science of Reading, What I Should Have Learned in College. Now, this was a picture a couple weeks ago, and I think it's all the way up to 60.3K. There's a reason why it goes up so fast. This community has turned into a learning community of some of the most supportive and giving educators. She also has another webpage, that houses a wealth of information on the science of reading. So check it out. Next, it's time to make some more connections. Connect with Stephanie Stowler. She's an independent consultant and she offers training for implementing the science of reading in higher education and in elementary schools. She has much more than that though. Join her group and consider joining her reading academy as well. She has a gift uh, for explaining the science of reading in a real and understanding way. Now, this is something that you'll probably see and hear about in many places. Uh, learn about the simple view of reading. It's something that comes up a lot because it's so important. So listen to the great Linda Farrell talk about the simple view of reading. It's a game changer. And there's some videos there as well. Next, it's time to learn about how to fill those learning gaps. So I suggest reading The Knowledge Gap by Natalie Wexler or listen to it on Audible. If you don't have time for that, make sure to listen to her discuss her book in this webinar right here. This book is a quick read and a very useful one that talks about the importance of building content and vocabulary in classrooms. A big eye opener for me was when she discussed her frustration of the lack of progress that students are making. 
She writes about several experiences in classrooms that are teaching content to fill those gaps. And I have also listed some additional um, interesting information and websites that were mentioned in her book. Get some training. Now that you've started to build a foundation in science of reading, it's time to dig a little deeper and get some training. Here are some, several fantastic books and programs to look into. Depending on your needs and the time you have, the cost, uh, there are some incredible options to look into. There's more out there. I just couldn't fit it all on my slide. I would recommend talking to people and finding out what best fits your needs. School connection. Through this process, it's only natural to start thinking about how this will fit into your own school. So it's time to figure out if your school has a curriculum that's clear and systematic. Um, and it has a sequence that makes sense. The biggest takeaway that I have had from looking at scope and sequences is that you have to be on the same page with everyone you work with. Communicate and collaborate. I listed some scope and sequences in the area of phonics along with content. Now this, building a phon phonological awareness foundation, this is a topic that will come up a lot if you're learning about the science of reading. It's so important. Here are some places that you can get started. This was probably the biggest aha moment that I had with all of this. Phonological awareness does not have to end in early education. It goes on, and so it's crucial to the big picture of learning how to read. Orthographic mapping. It's time for another interesting topic. Make sure to listen to everything you can with David Kilpatrick. I left some links along with one of his books, Equipped for Reading Success. Orthographic mapping has to do with how the brain remembers sight words. And it's very, very interesting. And you'll find yourself saying, this makes sense a lot. And now you can add some science of reading to your classroom by adding a sound wall. You can take down your word wall and add a sound wall and it will help. Not only the kids, but it'll also help the teacher. Um, and it'll help you understand all the phonemes and the articulation of sounds. I also recommend that you make good friends with your speech and language teachers in your building. There's several links that are very helpful. All right, time to test it out. Time to test. So as you learn all of those, your, all those other things, you're going to be asking yourself, where do I start with this to group students or to start working with an individual student? You'll need some assessments to identify your at-risk students, make some diagnostic decisions and figure out how you're going to progress monitor the interventions that you're trying out. Here's some links and some nice assessments that will help you to think about your students' needs and get you thinking about the data that you'll be collecting that will help you drive your instruction. It's planning time. So once you've collected some data, it's time to plan. Most schools are following a typical literacy or balanced approach, but the science of reading is really striving to take on a structured literacy approach. So here are some helpful websites along with some webinars that will help you to look at different lesson frameworks, resources, and then don't forget about learning about decodable books. Multisyllabic instruction. This is an area that is newer to me, but so useful, not only with older students, but also with younger students. These webinars will help you understand the importance of learning syllable patterns and syllable division, but will also help you to understand the importance of being flexible and becoming more of a problem solver when it comes to figuring out multi-syllable words. Make sure to watch how Linda Farrell and Michael Hunter teach students how to find out or how to figure out these multi-syllable words. And don't forget 
this little hidden gem down here that with Devin Kearns as he discusses syllable instruction. Learn about morphology. I believe the best place to go is to Dr. Deb Glasser. She has a new book out along with a Facebook page that you can connect with. And it goes into some really, really interesting and very practical ways to instruct your students about morphology. So I hope you found this helpful and I would love to hear your suggestions or other perspectives coming from another angle. There are so many resources. So I apologize if I missed something. I do believe that it, as you follow the sequence, you'll run into even more resources that fit your interests and needs and helps you to build your science of reading knowledge. Thank you.